pray that you learn how to shout and worship the Lord by the Holy Ghost. Because it takes you beyond the human strength and beyond human ability over into a realm that is just supernatural. And it's so much fun. Hallelujah. It's so glorious. It's a place where the beginning of the things of God, the beginnings of, of His Spirit begin to be developed on the inside of you. Shows you how to walk in divine health. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which means you don't get sick. You know, it's a lot better to live in divine health and not get sick rather than to, you know, have to constantly be pressing in to be delivered from whatever you got plaguing you. Hallelujah. 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 To live in divine provision. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of you are hot. This is nothing. This is nothing. I just came from Cuba. This is nothing. Enjoy the cool breeze. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just be overwhelmed with His goodness. Just be overwhelmed with His glory right now. His presence is here. Let Him feel you. He feels in the place. You know, God is filling this room. But the walls can't do much with it. God is filling this room. But the chairs can't do much with it. Huh. Hallelujah. God's filling this room. But the carpet can't do much with it. Ooh. Ooh. Hallelujah. Father has made a way that the glory of his presence and the expression of who he is would be revealed and seen through our lives. You gotta learn how to yield. Uh, you're gonna have to learn how to yield yourself. You're gonna have to quit doing what you're doing and stop do start doing what God's doing. He's doing joy. Hallelujah. He's doing joy unspeakable. And I'm telling you right now, people need to go to the school of the Spirit, and learn how to do that. Hallelujah. You know, Father's realm is about, about all that we can do. It's not about all that we cannot do. His realm is about all that we can do. His realm is about all the vast things of His pleasures and of His joy and of His life that we now get to enjoy. People all stuck down in the realm of darkness trying to figure out how to stop doing whatever it is they're doing. I say get called up over here into the light. Hallelujah. Get caught up over here into the glorious liberty of the sons of God and start seeing all that God has empowered you to do rather than having the thing all upside down where you're so trapped by desires that have nothing to do with God nor with the redeemed. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus that tonight your eyes will be open, you'll begin to see. Hallelujah. You know, I'm just not going to let Jesus pass me by. There was many who sat quiet as Jesus walked by them. Many. Thousands. I'm going to cry out. I'm not just going to let him pass me by. I'm not going to just sit and yawn and think I know him and say, oh, well, I was there, I saw him. I ate a couple of pieces of fish and a piece of bread. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You could have not kept me away from him. And I can prove that by my actions and my deeds. In the anointing, I'll be right in the big middle of it. You're not locking me out the room. You can't lock me out of the room. And when you have that desire, they won't lock you out of the room. They make room for you. They say, this person belongs in here. It's something that is developed and formed, not in your network of associations, not in your degrees, not in the things that you do about your own personal appearance, but something that takes place in the secret chambers, shut away with God, where he says he belongs here. She belongs here. And right here, caught away in the separate place, in the private room, in the assembly of the mighty. 
The beautiful thing of it is, his father has invited everyone. Many are called. He's invited everyone. But there's only a few who cry out, who will not stop, who bust down the door and come let down their hair and begin to kiss his feet and begin to wash them with the tears of their eyes and dry them with the hair. Some people are just willing to let it. They have, the, they have, a, they have a theological disposition and display of their life that's pretty much encapsulated in a song, K Sera Sera. Whatever will be, will be. I'm not kidding you. I was sitting in Zambia, Livingston, Zambia. Huh? And they started singing the song. I said, there it is. There's the Antichrist spirit. This is the theme song of many people in the church. I'm not going to let things be. God's not called me to let things be. I'm not going to occupy myself with my own life. I'm not going to occupy myself with my own things. The Lord said, if you lose your life, you can have mine. If you hold on to your life, you'll lose it. If you hold on to your life in this world, you'll lose it. Hallelujah. 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 It just really begins. I mean, step one is just beginning to delight yourself in the Lord. Have an exuberant rejoicing and praise. Somebody had a recently fix my microphone. I, I don't want to sound like, you know, somebody from Star Wars. I don't want to sound like a fictional character. Someone who just had some helium or whatever. A person who was in a devastating situation, terrible devastating situation. I said, God is so good. Won't you just start rejoicing in all the good things of God? Well, everybody around said, my, he's insensitive. You can just hear it. He's insensitive. Oh, that's an inappropriate thing to say. Mourn with them and mourn. You can just hear it. That's not what God says. When you learn how to, when you learn how to walk with God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You show, somebody, you show me somebody who knows how to lay hold of love, joy, and peace, and I'll show you somebody who's close to him. You show me people who are far away from love and joy and peace, they're far away from God. I don't care what they, I don't care how many Bible verses they know. I don't care how much church they attended. I don't care if they were born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost before they come out of the womb. If they don't know about love, joy, and peace, they don't know about him. It's an evidence of fellowship. And, you know, the beautiful thing of it is, once again, Father has made a way and opened up a door for everybody to step into this realm. Once again, His presence fills the place, but the walls cannot express it. The chairs cannot do it. He has made a way to where the, you and I, these creatures, formed in His image and His likeness, shaped by His hand, might express all, who he, all that He is in a world today. In the midst of a dark and perverse and crooked world, we shine as lights. We shine as lights. Who? We shine as lights. This little light of mine is like the noonday sun. This little light of mine, it is like the noonday sun. This little light of mine is like the noonday sun. It will shine. I'll let it shine. I'll let it shine. And really it does. Will you let his glory shine in your life? You can just be quiet and be seated here. Just talk to you a little bit. Because I'm here tonight with an anointing right out of heaven that as the word goes forth, it will change you. Amen. It will heal you. If, you'll, if, if you don't allow Satan... See, you have to be careful how you hear. You can have a, people full of, you can have a room full of ten people. Six people will be encouraged by the same word that four people will be discouraged by. Six people will get happy... Four people will get sad. Same word. You have to be careful how you hear. Because if you hear recognizing that God has given you an opportunity, that he stands ready, stand at the door of your heart, banging on it. Saying, open up, man, I empower you. And Papa, when the Lord Jesus comes to sup with you, in other words, to sit with you, to in, live with you, to, you know, fellowship with you, you're going to have yourself some divine ability. Hallelujah. And you know, it has been for such a long time where if in a meeting 
you get 10% people, 10% of the people respond to the healing, 10% of the people respond to the anointing. And on the real big meetings is 30% of the people. You pray for 10, you pray for 10 people, one to three have a response. Everybody else just stand there. Waiting for something to happen. You know, come on, it's true. They're locked in the prison of their mind, they're incarcerated in their own concepts and precepts, in their own human realm. It's so sad. Have 100 people, it's better, it looks better. <laughs> when you got 100 people and you got 20 people responding, you know, <laughs> yes, that's loud. And look better, everybody's done. And you got 1,000 people, you got 200, 300 people going after it. I'm telling you, that has an influence. But it's about time that all God's people start responding to Him. That everybody who's named the name of the Lord Jesus to Christ, go ahead, step on over into the divine opportunity that, it, that He's given to us. He's calling us up. The Lord Jesus is calling us up. God has called us to come and to live into a, in a realm called the realm of the Spirit. It is the realm of heaven, the heavenly. It is a realm that is not a realm of the world. It is a realm that allows us to function in a supernatural dimension in fellowship with God and by virtue of being there, there's these divine expressions and there's these divine interactions. You have visions and dreams without trying. You didn't have to fast and pray to have visions and dreams, huh? You get to have visions and dreams just because you walk in the Spirit. You lay hands on the sick and they recover. You have authority over all unclean spirits. They have to obey what you say. Somebody said, what about the witch doctor? It's not the witch doctor you need to be concerned about. It's me. Because his power can't touch the power that's living on the inside of me. It's not the devil you need to be concerned about. It's God. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give all these things power and place and position. Hallelujah. It's about time God's people understand that we've been invited to come into a heavenly realm to where that signs and wonders and miracles is just a natural disposition. Yeah. Amen. I mean, being overwhelmed with the presence of God. I tell you, you know, I've lived in the church since the early 60s. Well, since 1959, I was born in Caney, Kansas. Somebody said, are you, oh, you're from Kansas. No, it was a 12-week revival. And I was born there, and then, because dad's a preacher, in case you hear or listening don't know that, it's a 12-week revival, so we moved on. That was the last time I've ever been in Caney, Kansas. I've never been back. Okay. And I've been, you know, and when I, my senses, when I was the little guy, I remember I can tell you about specific events in my life, not because they slammed my hand in the door or something just about got my eye poked out. You know, dramatic experiences when you're little, you remember those. I remember my dramatic experiences were encounters with God. I can remember the feel, I can remember the sense of the atmosphere of what it was like in 1968, 1969, and what we call the Jesus revival. I remember the atmosphere of it. Actually, I can, actually some of that atmosphere I sense here tonight. Why? Because it's not just so much about what's going on in this place, it's, what go, it's what's going on in a heavenly place, what God's doing by His Spirit, not just here, all over the place. Now, He gives you and I an option to fit into it and cooperate with it and participate in it, but you could be actually thinking about your roast or the fact that you didn't, your, the shoes that you got at, at Nordstrom's Rack wasn't all together what you wanted and they didn't want to take them back and so you're upset. And you're just concerned about the fact that you pay 20 bucks for those shoes and you can't take them back. And the whole power of God just passed by you and you never even knew it because you were caught away with your shoes for $20. Or whatever the problem is, because that's where people live. They live in destruction. Father's called us to live in a realm called the Spirit. Hallelujah. And it, it, it's a place of abundant life. It, it, I can't even be, you can have just come over here and, and enjoy it because it goes beyond description. But I know that what happens is when you begin to touch the realm, you don't want the things that belong to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And understand, when God sets up the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, he talks, he's talking about the unregenerated, the unredeemed, what belongs to a satanic realm, and that which we once are, had our conversation in. And so many people... Have, have been compromised by false doctrines, by wrong models, that they've actually embraced living in some kind, some measure of that. But when you begin to walk over here in this realm of the heavenly, your delights become empowered 
by that pleasures that are at his right hand. My goodness, you feasting at the table now. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, true delights. You're not going to go. You're not going to go back to those former things. And if God's people would just understand that there is an opportunity to come and live in this realm of life, and living in this realm of life isn't so much about all that you're doing. It's about your fellowship and interaction with Him. It's about your delight in Him. And so, therefore, we know who's really doing this because we can see it within the expression of praise. I mean, I, there was a point tonight worshiping that I wanted to grab Annal and bring her up on the stage and say, this is what it's supposed to look like. Because that was beautiful. That was Holy Ghost smile. That's Holy Ghost joy. That's, that's unburdened with all the things that she probably got more reason to be burdened in this place than most of all of you, if not all of you. It's true. But some people have found that the joy of his presence is more important than the sorrows of the things that we can be worried about and burdened over. Huh? Hallelujah. If you can't learn how to rejoice in the good time, you just out, you just, you know what? You're out for the count. In any kind of a problem, any kind of a real issue, just leave them alone. Just leave them alone. You say any good thing to them, they'll think it's bad. If you encourage it, it'd be discouragement. So just leave them alone. If you call them up, they'll think you'll put them, if you call them up, they'll think you're putting them down. Come on, people. Jesus says to us, he said, I am the door. If anybody wants to enter into this realm and come interact with God Almighty, come on in. This is pretty radical, isn't it? We want to make Jesus a religious door that we can all sit around and genuflex about and have a little, have a little <laughs> snot-blowing contest. Be a little sorrowful, a little sad, take up a little praise gods and hallelujahs and go about living our own life. That's not what he's talking about. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. It had his right hand and his pleasures forevermore. I'm telling you right now, this is the one who created all things by Christ Jesus, the eternal word. I mean, this is life. This is the power and the presence that caused the seraphim angels to start screaming, holy, holy, holy. If, if my voice, man, you should hear what I'd be doing right now if my voice wasn't so worn out from preaching outside so much. Man, if I had your voice and you had my passion, wow. We'd be having some shouting going on here tonight. My passion came right out of heaven. It ain't been diluted by the mess of this world. It ain't been diluted by compromise with demonic powers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You find this, you find it is worth serving God. You get rid of the leaven, you're going to have yourself some heaven. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. You find out there is a reward in walking with God. Listen, I'm telling you right now, discipline is important in people's life. People don't know how to have, to have discipline in their life. They can just do whatever it is that becomes easy. My goodness gracious. Then you're just going to flop around in whatever thing it happens to be convenient. God's people, highly disciplined army. Amen. Highly disciplined group of people that don't do what they're not supposed to do, and they do the things that God's called them to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't make excuses and try to rewrite it. You know, when you live under authority, fix my mic, when you live under authority, you're not telling somebody how, to, how you're supposed to do your job. You're told by the master how to do your job. Well, let me just, can, let me redefine that for you. Let, let me set it up for you within the context of the way that my life is going on right now. Let's see how, God, you can fit into my life. Because I got all these bills and I've got all of this, you know, commitment to man. So let me just see how I can fit you into my life. Let's see if we can find some wiggle room for you. Don't sit there looking at me all saintly like. Because that's basically how Satan has set it up. It's about time God becomes first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come dwell and come and abide in him. The Lord has invited us into a realm that Elijah would, dis would display because the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. I mean, my goodness, he was getting translated all the time. Everybody was all afraid to talk to him because he was going to get caught away, you know? Huh? Are you with me? A good man, Obadiah, came to Elijah, his servant Ahab, and, and well, he was actually going searching out for some water and found a prophet. Huh? You know, that's what the story goes like. He's going, Ahab sent him out. So you go that way, look for water, I'll go the other way. Huh? He went searching for water because he was a righteous man. Ahab ain't going to find no prophet. Because the righteous man went searching for water, he found a prophet. 
to behold the answer, the solution, the word of God. Praise God. But bottom line of it is, he said, well, don't. He said, go tell Abraham I'm coming. He said, I'm not going to do that. See, you, is my life, is my, not my life precious unto you? I know what's going to happen. You're going to tell me you're going to be in one place. God's going to catch you away. We're not going to be able to find you. He's going to hide you away in his secret place, being caught away. Huh? It's like the prophets came to Elisha and said, let us go look for him. Surely he's stuck on a mountaintop somewhere. They saw him go up in the chariot. He was well known for being translated, caught away in heaven. Does that sound fun, like fun to you? See, it ain't even going to be a possibility until it's a reality. For me, it's a reality. Other people sitting around worried about their bills. I don't know, bills. I ain't thought about that. I'm talking about being translated. I'm talking. I'm thinking about being caught away in the realms of glory. I'm talking. I'm so captivated about all this thing that I get to do for eternity in God, and He's already opened the door for me to be able to start experiencing it. Are you hearing me? You start walking with God, and these things are going to come real to you. You're not going to yawn when this is going down. You're not going to just read the Bible and say, wow, I wish I was there. My goodness, you're, you're more than there. Hallelujah. We more than there. We got a bigger opportunity than any of them had except for Paul, Peter. We got the same opportunities they had. Few people see it, and they run with it. They run quick with it. They don't have to spend. Stephen wasn't around for years and years. He was, must have been barely around for a couple of years. And he was going at it from, the, from hitting the ground from day one. Philip said, man, I want to have some fun too. That's all it took. Oh, it's a special gifting, special calling, special anointing for a special group of people. I'm going to tell you right now, I want you to understand that you have a special group of people with a special calling, a special gifting, and a special divine opportunity. It's just that, you know, some people say, forget about all of this stuff. I'm burning my oxen. I'm going to make firewood out of, my, out of the tools that I've been working with. And I'm going after the realms of the supernatural. I'm going after the realms of the spiritual. I'm going after the realms of the heavenly. Other people are staring going, I, I, how can I stop? I, I, I promised somebody I was going to turn in X many pounds of wheat and X many pounds of barley. And, you know, I've got a commitment and a couple of contracts going on right now. I guarantee you Elisha had all that. I guarantee you. I guarantee you he had earthly commitments backed up, you know, four or five years down the road. When God calls, give me a break. Is he going to hold some earthly human commitment to you? when he's, He knows exactly what's going on. He's called you. Oh, Lord, I can't come because I made some commitments to men. It's just like Moses telling the Lord he can't talk. In fact, worse. It's worse. We got our worlds upside down. God wants to turn them right side up. We got our priorities all messed up. God wants to straighten them out. Because it's just, and that's why when you, if, as a newborn babe, and this is why you just got to teach this to people. When they give their life to Jesus, they're going to just need to go on in because that's the most exciting, exciting moment. That's the time where you're willing to go all the way. And if some spoiler, some ruiner, some circumciser doesn't get their hands on you, and you get around a Holy Ghost person like me, you're going to just blast right off. You're not going to get on the roller coaster up and down. You're going to strap into the rocket. Yeah. And you're going to go straight up. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to have all these delays and all these postponements. I believe that you have to repent over every delay and every postponement, every opportunity that you didn't walk in. God gave you an opportunity you chose to go do something else. You need to repent and go on. Most people's problems, they just need to repent. Most people's problems need to repent get right. They won't repent, won't get right because they justified in their eyes. They know better than anybody else. And if you really understood, you'd recognize how close I am to the Lord. Sitting here with my big old frown on my face. And haven't, haven't done anything in the kingdom all my life. But forget about that. It's a secret thing. God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart and he knows your actions too. And your actions are actually going to reveal your heart. Amen. No man can know my heart. <laughs> well, you know what? No man can, but those who walk after the Spirit do. Amen. Amen. There's something called the discerning of spirits. There's somebody who knows the evidence that the Bible lays out for those who are right and those who are wrong, those who are going on to God and those who are not, and gives to us the remedy and the solution to help people who are stuck and want to move forward so that they can move forward. This is true. God hasn't left us out what he gave. He, like God hasn't left us out of those things he gave to Elijah. He's not let us out, left us out of the opportunities that he gave to Moses. Moses gets to get, 
Moses gets to get five minutes with God. Five minutes. You with me? Maybe. How long did it take for the glory to pass before him? Right? Five minutes. Right? When the glory passed before him in Exodus chapter 34? God Almighty, the Father, come live on the side of me. Come live and dwell on this side. And you. And anyone who will be. Now, if you just play make-believe, patty clake religion, ah, oh, it's just a concept, it's an idea, it's some positional salvation, you make it something other than it's not, well, then they're gonna, it won't have any effect on you. You'll just be the sour push you've always been. You're just walking just the human realm that you've always walked in. Are you listening to me? You let God begin to live. You let Him arise. So much of the, uh, the New Testament is just devoted to this wonderful realm that we've been invited into where we've been made the temple of the living God where he comes and lives and dwells on the inside of us. You talk about, I mean, the seraphim just look at him and scream the top lungs, holy, 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 cover the face. Because it's too, though they pure have never sinned, it's too pure to look at. And God says, with unveiled face, come look at me. Amen. To you and me, redeemed by the blood. See, what happens to me when I heard the word of God come forth as this, I went running to him. I just said, there I feel like I'm just so far from God. That's doubt and unbelief. That should make you feel like you're so close to God. How on earth did you hear so far from God in that? Are you listening to me? You should have heard so close to God. Behold, it stands at the door and knocks. Huh? Somebody think they're seeking God. God's seeking you. Somebody said they're chasing God. God's chasing you. The Lord Jesus says to Nicodemus, wanting to understand, Nicodemus' question just really is supercharged in John chapter 3. How are you doing what you're doing? We know that you're a teacher sent from God because no man could do these works that, that you're doing lest God be with him. He wants to understand the realms of this power, this realms of this glory. How do I get in there? How did, how did you touch this realm of the sacred? Jesus simply says to him, you must be born again. Because born again is the call of God for you and I to come and walk in the realms of the kingdom. To come and walk in the realms that we see Elijah in, that we see Moses in, that we see Enoch in, that we see, you know, when Abraham, think about Abraham, he gets to sit down. Just one day in his life, he got to sit down and have a meal with God. Pretty radical, eh? That ain't nothing. The Father lives and dwells on the side of me. Abraham got one day. I get every day. That how valuable is it to you? How real is it to you? Or is it just religious concepts and ideologies that have no practical application or revelation or manifestation in your life? You have to think about this. It's religion or relationship. And a lot of people I've seen say they got relationships. It's not about religion. Because it doesn't take much hunger to have an outpouring of heaven on your soul. It really doesn't take much hunger. Father's made these things so easy. Just take a sip. Just take a drink. Old prophet, the prophet in the Old Testament said, get your tongue fat with thirst. Where your tongue faileth deep with thirst. That means your tongue's so swollen, your kidneys are swollen, your legs are swollen, you're so thirsty. Then I'll open up heaven. Jesus says, take a sip. He said, just take a little drink, and out of your belly should flow. Out of your passions and your emotions. Huh? People just, people, I mean, I think about it. You know, look, people talk about, I got a river. Well, where is that river flowing anyways? What does it look like? He's saying, out of your passions and out of your emotions. When's the last time you had a burst of the life of God out of your passions and your emotions that was so unlimited, so powerful, so glorious? Huh? That the only way God could express it is that it's like rivers of expression. It's not just some little water hose. If it's a little water hose, it's a little little garden hose. Garden hose of divine expression. We would think we were in full blown revival. If everybody's walking around with their garden hose of divine expression, coming through their passions and their emotions, Father wants to. When this starts happening, 
Sin is iniquity, has no value to you. It's a disdain to you, you hate it. And God, in, as sons, we get to learn obedience. Hallelujah. Jesus, did you know Jesus learned obedience? But you're not going to learn obedience carousing with demon spirits. You're not going to learn obedience trying to walk in human discipline. Huh? There's a divine discipline. You learn, you learn obedience by walking over here in fellowship and relationship with the Father. Could you fix my mind? We're going to call this the title of this sermon tonight. Would you please fix my mind? <laughs> the proof of being born again is that you in fellowship I really didn't need you to turn it up. I just needed you to fix the EQ. The real, the real description of being born again is the fellowship. See, John comes in the first epistle of John. He comes on the highest level of authority. He said that which was from the beginning. He's going to say, look, I've seen Jesus face to face. I've been with him. So listen to me. I've watched him and moved with him. He laid hands on me and more. Watch this. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we, this is, he's going to give himself the highest credentials to say what he's going to say in the first epistle. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled at the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness unto you of that eternal life that was manifested unto us. That which we have heard and which we have seen, we declare unto you, that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Now he's getting ready to bring it down. He's getting ready to lay it out. He said, I know what I'm talking about. He just said with a big, huge, you know, shout, I know what I'm talking about. You better listen up. And then he brings the hammer. Verse the epistle of John is a hammer. I mean, the first epistle of John is the light divided from the darkness, the truth separated from the lie. Those who are of God distinctly made manifested from those who are of Satan. Powerful epistle. And he's just, and the call is all about walking in this communion, dwelling and abiding in God. Excuse me while I dwell and abide in God. Excuse me, while I don't let some temporal little pro issue that causes everybody else to be devastated to have any effect or at all on me. Excuse me. You would just have to sorrow on your own. I'm going to be over here rejoicing. When you want to come over, you're invited any time. People who think that God actually... Fix my mic. People who think that God actually... It's all about EQ. It's not about volume. People who actually think that God comes and babysits them in their sorrow. And he just comes and consoles you. And, oh, bless you. I'm so sorry you feel so bad. I understand how you feel. No, he doesn't. And he does not do any of that. He calls us up. He says, get out of that. Come here. He says, leave that alone. Huh? He said, let the dead bury the dead. He said, don't sorrow after that like all the rest of the unbelievers. Come over here. Get over here in this life. Are you listening to me? He looks at Aaron and said, don't you try a tear. Don't you cry a tear. Don't you disfigure your face. You look happy, get happy. You got the royal garments on. You got the priestly garments on. You get happy. Uh, we need some mourners. You go ahead and go with your mourners. I'm going to go over here and, mock, uh, and with the joy and the rejoicing. Quit living like your life consists of and is valued based upon what you're doing right now because it is not valued based upon... Those things that are confined with, when I say what you're doing right now, those things that are confined within the human, earthly, physical realm. What you're doing right now does have a huge impact on what you're going to do through eternity, but it's, that's all about walking around in another, walking around, around, around in another realm. It's the realm of the Spirit. It's the realm of heaven. It's the realm of fellowship. It's the realm of interaction. It's the realm of the kingdom. Paul said we were delivered. This is hard for people to understand. But I'm going to keep telling you. If I've got to tell you 10,000 times, I'm going to tell you until you get it. That's just how good God is. Paul says we've been delivered from darkness and translated in the kingdom of dear son. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it. I've already won it. I'm not in it to win it. I'm in it because I want it. It's given to me. It's mine. It's yours. These things are ours. 
You and I get to choose what we're going to believe. You get to choose what you're going to agree with. God has written his ways, his statutes, his judgments, everything about who he is upon our mind and upon our heart. He's established them there. He's put his word of faith in our heart and in our mouth. But we're going to have to be willing to agree with him. We're going to have to be willing to live by the word and say, Father, what you said is the dictate of which the way that I live my life. I'm not going to worry about things. You know, as I said this morning, I heard a couple of theologians that got together from a very prestigious school. And this is true. This is just recently done. And they encapsulated the whole of the Old Testament and New Testament in, in one sentence. And it was a very, very good sentence. It was something like God reigns. He's Savior. He's Redeemer. He's Provider through covenant in Christ. I thought, well, that's very good. But I got you beat. Because I can give you the whole Old Testament and New Testament in two words. Trust God. It's where Adam failed, Abraham succeeded. Jesus personified it. And it really impacts every part of our lives. I got woke up in the middle of the night last night, you know. Just, you know, sometimes, you, and, and of course, Father is preparing you to be used more. Because the more you use, the more... Satan tries to act up, do his things. But if you have authority and un unaffected by what he suggests, you just slap him and he leaves. Yeah, yeah. And if you, get, if you fear his threats, he'll impose them upon you. You walk around in his depression, sorrow, and your, his mind. Okay. And that looks pretty ugly to me. Yeah. The redeemed of the Lord return, they come looking beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> they come with singing and design. Yeah. I mean, have you ever noticed that? You can see somebody who's just so ugly. I mean, you, don't, you can't even imagine how they could possibly be so ugly. How a person could be, a human being could be so ugly. But then if they're smiling and happy, they're just beautiful. They just line up. It's true. It's true. It is true. Praise God. You can get a beauty, you get a beauty fix here tonight. This is free. This is free. Beauty fix right here tonight. Hallelujah. Complete and total makeover. Praise God. Now you know how to be beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just be so happy and joyful. True. It's true. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What was I talking about? Who remembers? Yeah, thank you. One person, praise God. Of course, most people are used to me having three or four uh, stories running simultaneously, you know, I mean, like converging at one point. So it's like, which one, which, 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 which one? And I know some of you were still really stuck on, really? I mean, I can look beautiful just being happy? <laughs> it completely erased all other thoughts from your head. It's like, wow, interesting. I woke up in the middle of the night last night, some crazy, you know, dream where a bunch of people chasing me down, you know, kind of thing. It's like, wake up. And you wake up, and all of a sudden, you know, your mind starts remembering every possible thing that could go wrong, you know. And that, real, that drill started running for me about a whole of about 15 to 20 seconds because I was just like, you know, just woke up a little over, overtired. And then I should have woke up Bastigia de la Lama Sibe Bebeki and de la Lamana. And I was a little disappointed in myself that I wasn't praying in the Holy Ghost with everybody tra chasing me. I was a little bit disappointed I was even running, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's usually not going on. It's usually everybody else is running, you know. That's the way I want it. But at any rate, at any rate, I was like, and some of the things that were valid and some of the things, you know, could have a real possibility. You know what? I've learned a long time ago shut up. This is a pure, beautiful word shut up. You lying, filthy thing. Father, I just thank you that I get to trust you, and I don't care what happens to me. I love my, my life. I don't care. I don't love any part of my life, even under the death. I don't love my life. I'll go all the way with you. My goodness, and when that's what that way, you're not going to come under fear and torment. I live in a realm called heaven with Almighty God as my provider, and, and he's going to take care of everything. He's my protector, my provider. He's my perfecter. I don't, I don't have any. I don't, I'm good to go. I don't have any worries. Father's calling everybody to come and live over in this realm and shut all this other influence down because it's just tricks of Satan. He's very good. He's, a very, he's very good at his stuff to deceive you, get you basically in, in a place of doubt and unbelief so he can trip you up 
fill you up with all his stuff. Father's invited us to come around, live in realm where you and I get to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I get to be endued with his glory. I get I get to come hotel. I can sit down and be filled up with heaven, yeah. filled up with divine power in such a way. I can be filled with the Spirit, and the result of it is psalms and hymns and spiritual song and the giving of thanks. I know that there's many people sitting in church, they haven't given thanks in years. Maybe Thanksgiving, but they didn't smile when it was on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> and it really wasn't about Jesus, but in church, they're not really, they don't know how to stay in the joy. There's people right now, they're just so perplexed, they look so miserable. And what's funny is those kind of folks want to come and try to tell you how, how close they are to the Lord. You just want to burst out in laughter. You know? <laughs> You're the only person that believes that. You and the devil that's talking to you. <laughs> You're it. Because nobody else is going for that. Because the redeemed of the Lord of returning come with singing and design. Everlasting joy and undiminishing joy is on their face. Amen. They have retain, obtained gladness and joy. And all sorrow and sighing fled away. You know, and, and this is the, these are the kinds of things that the Lord lays out there before us, and it's just evidence, and we always have there at our door, right there at, our, at, our, at the doorstep of our will, an opportunity to say, oops, here I am back over here in sad land again somehow. Here I am over here in depressed land, doubt and unbelief land. Hey, why pray when you can worry? I'm over here in worry land. Why? I'm over here overcome, concerned with my own self and my only issues. And it can be for you a flag to get right back over where go come and drink and be filled so that you can be strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord, not to be tripped up and tricked. There's some people in the measure that walk with God based upon how, how tormented they are. There's some folks that every time you talk to them, oh, we're going through a great conflict, a great spiritual conflict, the devil's on us, and we're going through a great spiritual war. Are you never, are you ever at a time that you're not in a spiritual war? <laughs> You're just focused on the wrong thing. A man of God told me one time, he said, listen, understand this. I mean, he really understood things, understood in how to deal with demon spirits and powers of darkness. Listen, he said, Satan's just like a little kid. The more attention you give him, the more he acts up. Give him none. If you encounter him, rebuke him and tell him to go to hell. Leave it there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's it. Done. Amen. We're done. We're done with that. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where else are you going to send him? Where else are you going to send him? Where are you sending him? Somebody said, send him into uh, Fidel Castro. No, I'm not kidding you. Somebody said, take, where, where, where should we? I heard a story. Like, with this, with casting out a devil. And they said, well, where should the devil go? He said, well, just go ahead and send him into Fidel. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It was, no, he's not supposed to he, go back to the pit if that helps you. You're sanctimonious, whatever it is you got. Uh, for me, I mean, it's just going to lay it right out there for what it is. Amen. Come on, people. <laughs> huh, it's amazing how, many, how, much, how much profanity and blasphemy and all kinds of stuff people tolerate. And then they get in church and you say something like hell. <laughs> and everybody's like, <laughs> Jesus, help us. Weirdness. Human weirdness. Jesus. It's called religion. Capital letters with a gigantic stink at the end. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. Papa's invited us. He's invited us. He's invited us. He's invited us. He's invited us. When's the last time you cast out a devil? When's the last time you laid hands on the sick and they recovered? When's the last time you walked faithful to God in a situation that was besetting you and overwhelming you, but you rejoiced and was steadfast and broke through? When is the last time you proved him? While you're sitting around judging and criticizing everything that's going down uh, that the Holy Ghost is bringing out. People, people resist the Holy Ghost, stand, sit in their seats, criticizing what's being said, and actually don't even understand it. But they are actually resisting the Holy Ghost and criticizing God and wondering why things aren't going good for them. <laughs> Satan's like going, good, go on, criticize them some more, because you're on my team. You did, that's it. And man, I got, some, I got some really bad, miserable stuff I'm bringing your way tomorrow. 
You're getting yourself all set up for me to unload my badness on you. Are you listening to me? Come on, people. Father's calling us in a realm of protection, in a realm of safety, a place. He, he's called us to come over and live in this place where he can care for us. We abdicate and we go off and we agree with the things of Satan and the satanic realm and wonder why it is that there's sickness and disease and sorrow and oppression and confusion and wrong process of thinking. I'm going to walk in the mind of the Spirit. I'm going to walk over in the place of peace. I'm going to walk over in the place of love. I'm going to walk over in the place of servitude. I'm going to call God's people to come over here and I'm going to harass you if you don't. Because you're a false stinking witness. You're a false witness of who he is. I'll make sure everybody knows how much. They don't pay attention to that. It's a false witness. Amen. Amen. I preached a false witness message in Norway. Who was with me in Norway? Burned out, burned out preachers. They were burned out preachers. Some of them retired preachers. I mean, it was a, it was a building full of preachers. I'm not kidding. Burned out preachers, retired preachers, and some that were still uh, pastoring. First night I laid it out. I'm mean, just ripped the thing right center sideways. You false witnesses. God hates a false witness saying you know him and you live in like you living. It was amazing that anybody came back to the next meeting. <laughs> From a natural perspective, it was amazing. The power of God gripped their heart. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. One man is. One man of God pastored for many years. He was actually the musician in the, in the church. He comes to me weeping. He said, I've been one of those false witnesses. I want to get right with God. Uh, just one thing after another. And I was with this, it, this. We were praying for the sick one night, and there was this woman. She was the wife of a pastor, the daughter of a pastor, and granddaughter of a pastor. She tells me about her two sicknesses. She's got a, a ruptured disc in her neck she's got um, some other disease and so I just laid my hands on her said in the name of Jesus and when I laid my hands on her prayed for her I just I just laid my hands on people pray for them I don't spend a whole lot of time it's God's business when he told me to lay my hands on sick they recover I, I spend time with them if the Lord tells me to I was on the next person what she didn't tell me was that she had two broken ribs and she was in immense pain and she couldn't live, raise her hand suddenly she realized she had her hand raised and that, her, and that her ribs were not sore at all, that the broken ribs were completely healed. She's all excited about it. So, you know, I, I asked her about her neck. She said, well, my neck's still sore. Could you pray some more? And I, I just left it. But, I, you know, I said, in Jesus' name, I said, the same God who healed you, healed your ribs, is there to heal your neck. And so I went home and I said, Lord, why is it this woman got so quick, instantly healed of the broken ribs, but the other things she didn't get healed of? He says, because she didn't own the broken ribs. She owned the other two diseases. They were hers. The broken ribs just happened. They were in transit. They were going to heal up the others. They belonged to her. Those were her sicknesses and her disease. Um, here's my medication I take. You messed up. But good news, I'm here to help you. The Calvary has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Calvary has come just in time. With Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To some people here tonight, that's good news. To other people are like, <laughs> you mean I have to quit taking my medication? <laughs> Angelo and Christina's mother recently sent a report and um, she came one night and she said, listen, <laughs> the battery in my pacemaker is gone. It's just about gone. And they're telling me that I've got to get it replaced. And I just simply said, no, you don't. Well, that's a pretty... No, you don't. That's a pretty risky thing for somebody to agree with. My battery's gone. That was six years ago. They sent a, 
they, Angelo had sent, a re, sent out a report because she went in for a full physical and the doctors closed the case. You're going to be all right. The doctors closed the case. They gave her, what's wrong with you now? Are you acting like the rest of the congregation? I wish I could hold some of you. They gave her, they gave her a full physical workout, I mean, EKG, everything. And basically they said, we don't understand what's happened here, but your heart's perfectly normal. A big part of that was honor. Another part of that was trust. Both on, the, both on the trust of an earthly representative of God and of God. You can't trust an earthly representative of God, you're not trusting God either. You can try to dichotomize it, but the scripture says you're messed up. The word of God says you messed up. And if you think you know the word of God better than I, I do, you're fooling yourself. Because you don't. You just simply don't. So get over your arrogance. Get over your self-will. You know, anybody who can basically look at someone and criticize them is because they're so full of the pride of life. They're so far from servitude. When you learn how to walk in his love and his servitude, oh, you're going to esteem everybody, exalt everybody better than yourself. You don't have, you don't, the, the demonic realm of criticism and suspicion has no place to work within you. And the demonic realm of criti criticism and suspicion and division and always, you know, looking with, you know, with that fish eye to someone just doesn't even exist. It's a demonic realm. I mean, if you gave yourself, for example, to walking in the spirit to where you said, okay, Lord, I want to, I want to so live and walk in this realm of divine glory that I fall in love with people in the first three seconds of meeting them. Then what's going to happen is you're going to then discover how much stuff in, has been influenced in your mind because you've been living after the sniff test. Yeah. <laughs> Pure animal instinct. It's true. It's a full-on evaluation after a human mind and human reasoning and human understanding. Huh? Not different from a dog. Just a little bit different, you know. Traits and behavioral patterns. People, God's called us to come live in the heavenly realm. He didn't say nothing about living in the heavenly realm sometime, go ahead back, live back in the demonic realm. And then come on back to live on in the heavenly realm. And then every once in a while, we need to take a break, go ahead, hang out with the demonic realm for a vacation. I don't, honestly, we don't know what people are doing. We're trying to figure it out. <laughs> We're trying to figure out what people mean when they're, gonna, when they're walking around, having the privilege to walk in the anointing, the supernatural signs, wonders, power of God, and then they need to go on vacation. I, I think that is vacation. I think that I, there is nothing so glorious as being caught away and living out this life that Father has given us the opportunity to live. He's opened the door. He said, if you're born, he says, it's simple. You've got to be born again. If you're born again, you can't come into the, you've got to be born of the spirit. You've got to be born of the water. Otherwise, you can't come into the realms of the kingdom. You can't come into the kingdom. Everybody wants to make that, or many people want to make that something that you in, encounter and have after that you die. No, God wants you to have it while you are alive right now so you can be witnesses unto him of his resurrection, of his life. It is a realm that we've been translated, delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom, translated into the kingdom, translated into the kingdom, translated into the kingdom. Colossians 1.13. Colossians 1.13. Translated into the kingdom of the dear son. I'm living in heaven right now. I quoted a scripture the other day. I said, you know, We've been made partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And someone said, I know that's false doctrine. I said, well, if excuse me, I'm just quoting what Peter said. <laughs> you know, it's just reality. Evidence. People have, have a mind set that is purely based upon human reasoning and, and doctrines of men, and they can't hear the good word of God. It's like the ears are plugged. They've been, they've been filled with the words uh, uh, that come right out of the realm of 
of a lie. And it's almost like a filter against the truth. Got some good news tonight. I got a circumcision night. We're going to cut off that old foreskin <laughs> of the hearing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you want to hang on to it and pickle it, you can. But I'd advise my fires. I'd deserve it. You got to take away. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what people are doing with your lives. When God's, why does it take such a long time for people to get over into the expression of the manifestation of tongues and interpretation of tongues? Why does it take so long for people to get over into the realms of the shout and the prophecy? Why does it take so long for people to quit fussing and throwing down their book and throwing a fit? Why does it take so long? Why does fits go from this overt type right here to a more inward, you know, and more problematic situation. God's called us to come into heaven. He's called us to come over into the realm. He said, come, you're seated with me in the heavenly realm. Come over here, stand with me in this place of glory. Come dwell in me, come live in me. This is what the anointing is teaching you to do. Come and exist in me. If you'll live in me, if you'll give yourself to living in me, I will live in you. This is the contract. This is John chapter 15, verse three. Come dwell in me and I'll dwell in you. In other words, come live out my life and I'll live in you. Somebody said, well, shouldn't it be uh, come and, and I, I, I'll live in you so that you can live out my life? No, come, step out here into this realm of obedience and this opportunity that I've given you. And you're going to find out that I'm living on the inside of you. You're going to find out, hallelujah, the chairs can't express me. The walls can't respond to my manifest presence and my glory. I've purposed that that happens in your life. But you're going to have to be born again. You're going to have to have a new heart, a new spirit, so that you can be sensitive to the glory, that you can be sensitive to what I'm doing, so that you can respond to my will and to my way, so that you come over here and you will separate yourself from interaction with the demonic, so that you can only receive that which I have for you. Hallelujah. So it won't be a mixture, so that you won't be conflicted, so you won't be compromised, so you won't be spoiled goods. Hallelujah. John 15, 4. My wife's letting me know. Praise God for that. This says several times. Amen. I mean, if you could just read John 15, 1 through 7 and believe it. I mean, I know people can quote John 15, 1 through 7, and they don't, they don't even understand one single word they just quoted. They said it, but they don't understand it. So they said, how do you know? Because they've not lived it. This, and, 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 and it's not Father's fault because he's given us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He's given to us the understand, an understanding that we may know him, that we may dwell in him. The anointing that we've received of him teaches us everything, even as it has taught us and is no lie and is, a, and is the truth. That we should dwell in Him. That's what the Holy Ghost is teaching us every day. Somebody says, what's sanctification? Sanctification is simply the Holy Ghost showing us and empowering us how to live the life of Jesus. That's what sanctification is. And all, all this religious stuff. Get rid of your ring. Get rid of your necklace. Sit there and look like you just had sour lemons for, you know, <laughs> for refreshment. <laughs> you just chewed on a sour persimmon or whatever, you know. No, come on. Come on, people. Come on, people. There's a life of the spirit that has a, as a dimension of it uh, uh, that describes the dimension and demeanor of joy unspeakable and full of glory that we have we have to say yes to this. This shows that descri it is describing a realm of divine love to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Look how simple it is to walk in all the fullness of God. You want to walk in fullness of God? How many yeah. want to walk in fullness of God? Yeah. <laughs> no, I get this. I get this. I got a picture. <laughs> He says, I mean, it's not a whole lot of, you know, there's not a whole lot of passion. Papa's going, you just imagine Father's looking at that. He's looking right now. He's saying, how many of you want to walk in my fullness? And there's somebody going, he's like, what? I mean, you know, is there any kind of measure of reality yet that, we could, that we could get here? Is there anything, on, is there a blip on the screen? Because if you're responding to come and walk in this fullness, you go, What? What? I can walk in your fullness? You, you think about, you know, saying, oh, well, if I could win the lottery and get $12 million, oh, man, I would invest it. I wouldn't spend it like everybody else does. It wouldn't ruin my life like it ruins everybody else's life, and you're the first one to be going to spend it and get it ruined. Right? You know, everything's all going to be, you know, all going to be great. No, 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 no. If you could just sit in the fullness of God, you got no more problems. 
And you talk about set for eternity. You got no more. You want, money will not mean another thing to you forever for the rest of eternity. You won't. Currency of heaven is not money. It's faith anyways. Look at what God created with his word out there. It didn't cost him a dime. Hallelujah. Stay here. Look up in the stars. Hallelujah. Look at the vastness of the universe. He spoke it in a creation. He spoke some things about you that has hadn't taken place yet because your will's in the way. There was nothing to prevent him out there. Hallelujah. Just go begin in the month of a pranasata. I'll be stepping in the month of the day. Just the tonight. the normal of the day. Start by rolling it out. Start believing in the key to the most high. The word of God. Start living it out. Start speaking by the Spirit. Start speaking the word. Start prophesying the word of God over you. People say, "Oh, I think he's a false prophet." No, you the false prophet. You, you false, you prophesying all kinds of false things over yourself all day long about how bad you feel and how bad things are, and you wish people treated you better and all this other stuff. About how it's going to go bad and how it ain't going to go good. All these things, they have nothing to do with the Word of God. Nothing what God says. It's a false prophet. You're such a false prophet, you don't get here. And if you, and you're a false prophet, you think you're a true prophet, then everybody else who's a true prophet is the opposite of you. Right? <laughs> so then they've got to be a false prophet because you believe you're a true prophet. When in reality, you're a false prophet because you're not speaking by the Word. Here's somebody that comes and speaks by the Word. If I'm speaking the Word of God to you, on the obligation by the covenant of the Lord to do it. And then I'm good and well, what I'm doing, I'm declaring the good word of God to you. Amen. We're inviting you to step out of your realm and quit thinking like you're thinking. Amen. I wish you could just come live with me for a couple years and we'll straighten you out. And every time you started having a pity party, we'd spank you. <laughs> Re-raise you. You started, you, found, you started complaining, feeling sorry for yourself, we'd, we'd time out. Huh? We'll sit around and point and laugh at you. <laughs> Amen. 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 Come on, people. How easy it is to walk in the fullness of God describes. God describes in the word. How easy it is to walk in the fullness of God, to know the love of Christ. I hear a lot of people tell me how they much they love Jesus and how they know the love of Christ. That's a deserving fish eye. <laughs> Are you with me? Huh? Come on. My father's made it easy. Quit pretending. Quit making a game out of it. Quit saying you have something you don't have. And go ahead and lay hold on it because God's made given an opportunity. As soon as you quit lying and quit playing games with God and lay hold on the truth, you'll have it. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And then the fruits of it will be seen. You know, tr fruits are evidence. Anybody ever bought a fruit tree? It was tagged something, and then all of a sudden when the fruits came, it was different? Huh? I have. I have. Those, those, those apricot leaves looked just like peach leaves to me when they were young. They looked just like peach leaves. And that was supposed to be a peach tree, but that was an apricot. There's a lot of people telling me, they are Jesus. No, you're not. You're a devil. You're purely formed after a human realm. But God got some remedy for you. I got some good news for you. We get you converted tonight. You go from devil to Jesus. Praise God. You go from a devil man to a Jesus man. Hallelujah. You go from an honorary person, hallelujah, to a person full of thanksgiving. He's invited us to a realm called the realm of the spirit. And the evidence of it is love. His love. The love of Christ. The love of God. The love that is this servant to all, slave to all, that esteems everybody better than himself. A love that he showed to us when he went down, when he went to the, went to the cross and died for us and went down in the hill to pay our, you know, in, our, in a full payment of our debt, death burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, if, Christ, if God so loved us, we should also love the brethren. Don't tell me how much you know, Jesus. Give me a break. Go lie to yourself. You're the only one who's going to believe you lie. You and the devil. Come up here and bow to the word of God and bow to this truth. All, all I'm doing right now is just burning up some religion. Amen. Make sure that, you know, we're going we to test you out, see if you really want to be around here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hanging with the false witnesses. I'm not going to hang with people blaspheming the name of Jesus. I'm not going to hang with people walk around sick and diseased and all puffed up about how much they know God and how they suffer for the Lord. Now you just say, listen, man, I'm walking around in sickness because I'm stupid. I got disease in my life because I don't know how to follow Jesus. Yeah. I've I'm, I'm got depression and sorrow because I don't know how to yield to the Holy Ghost. 
And then that's good. Yeah. But don't tell me how much you love God and you're supposed to be a model of what we're supposed to all follow. Right. You walk around in your sickness, your disease, your torment, your depression, your lies, your misery. Give me a break. Yeah. Yeah. God's called us in the realm called heaven. Yeah. God, God, God's called us in the realm where, where we have all authority over unclean spirits to cast them out. Think about this. He gave, Matthew chapter 9, he gave to his disciples authority, all authority and power. God says both, dunamis and exousia. Both, he gives both the power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and all power and authority over all diseases. And he still says that they're not qualified to be his witnesses. After having received that, you say, like, okay, you guys, this is not for you 12 because you guys are already set to go because you've been with me for three years and you've received an abundance of, of, of a power and ability. Now, this is for all the rest of the folks. No, he says, you got to go tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high, until you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. People have redefined baptism in the Holy Ghost to mean something different than what Christ Jesus and context had described it to be because it was something far greater than what was being displayed in the apostles and disciples' lives who had all authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and all authority and all power over diseases. Did you, did you count how many days Thomas was sick and couldn't make it to the meetings? Did you count how many days Thomas was sick? Did you notice how many days that James suffered from a migraine? And it was, had a great opportunity in God, but he wasn't able to make it to the meeting? Nonsense. It didn't happen. It didn't have sickness and disease. It wasn't going on. They had all authority and power over sickness and disease because they were walking with Jesus. I'm inviting you to come walk with Jesus. Get out of your sickness and your disease. Man, as soon as the Lord told me, as soon as the Lord told me, they owned it. Suddenly, when, this just happened to me up in Norway. He said, she, she, she didn't get delivered because she didn't own the broken ribs. She owned the other two diseases. I got revelation on how to deal with people with diseases and sicknesses. I remembered back those women who came down from northern China was there in the meeting, and they couldn't, weren't getting healed because their sickness stood between them and Jesus. I tell them, raise your hand, forget about getting healed, just begin to worship the Lord and the things that in the power of God that begin to happen. I begin to understand some things about strongholds that need to be broken off of people. There's some people who will fight you to believe their lie, to hold on to their lie. Because it's arrogance. It's arrogance. It isn't even it isn't even rebellion. It's arrogance. It's the pride of life. It's the chief of all demon powers that belong to the spirit of the world. God functioned in an entirely different realm. He's invited us into an entirely different realm, a heavenly realm, where we get to come and learn of lowliness and meekness. That's counterintuitive to living in this realm of, of, of human existence and earth existence because you think th there's nobody going to be successful there. There's no one going to be, you know, make it, uh, make any any headway in loneliness and meekness, you're going to be run over. No. The meek will inherit the earth. The meek will. The people who don't speak up for themselves, they're not self-willed. Like I'm going to trust God. I'll let Father take care of it. God, said, God told us to come over into a realm with the Spirit where we can be taught lowliness and meekness, where we can be shaped and formed every day. Look at how easy it is to step in the full, to the fullness of God, to know the love of Christ. And somebody says, I want that. The Lord says, no problem. Now unto him who is able to do super abundantly above all that you can think or ask according to the power that works on the inside of you. In other words, you're good to go. I've already given you the goods. Now let God arise. I, I've already empowered you. Now begin to give yourself over. Give your members, yield your members as instruments, weapons literally of the kingdom of God to destroy and defeat everything that is contrary to God and do His ways in your life. That's what, he, that's what Romans chapter 6 is about. Yes. Having weapons of righteousness, bringing forth fruits of, of holiness. You know... Having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. God has called us to perfect holiness. He gave us the gift of holiness. I'm holy because he made me holy. God is holy and he made me holy. God is righteous and he made me righteous. God is almighty and we worship him alone. Alone, I'm in him, and he's in me. I'm in him, and he comes.
commanded me to be. Oh, God is holy, and he made me holy. Oh, God is righteous, and he made me righteous. Oh, God is almighty, and we worship him alone. Oh, alone I'm in him, and he's in me. Oh, I'm in him, and he commanded me to be. And yet, in that gifting, he tells us to perfect holiness. He gave us the gift of holiness so that we might grow in holiness, so that we might fully give ourselves over to holiness. When we were born this life, we were born in sin. And every day we were shaped in iniquity. Every day we were taught how to act like the devil. All of our models and examples, by and large, showed us that realm. But when we were born again, we were born in righteousness. Now to every day be shaped by the Holy Spirit in the realms of His glorious perfection and His glorious purity. See, God, as Peter said, He's called us to glory and purity. Listen, it's the, the realm that we've been called in according to His divine power. He's According to His divine power, He's given us everything that we need for life and godliness, to walk in his life and godliness because he's put this treasure on the inside of us that the excellency of the power and the glory may be of him and not of us. What is that? Christ in me. God the Holy Ghost living out in me. I'm going to tell you right now, God the Holy Ghost is not living out some sickness and some disease, some depression, some, some sorrow, some aggravation, some disappointment, some fear, some misery. Nonsense. Not. You need to repent. That's all there is to it. You got sickness in your life, you need to repent and get right with God. Now I'm starting to sound like the preachers of the 1800s. But look at what that produced. Now I'm starting to sound like the preachers of the 1920. But look at what it produced. Oh, I'm not talking. Uh, now I'm not talking about a post apostate, post humanist, secular humanist inflicted, affected gospel, which is another gospel. I'm talking about a call to get right with God, to have what he described in his word and nothing else. Amen. Yes. Yes. God's not medicated. There was a woman, a preacher's daughter, sitting in a meeting in Cuba the other night. Sandy, where's she? Sandy, you are, you are home watching by via web. Come on, get some stamina. Because you're a little tired. I'm all refreshed. I'm ready to go again. You know, we want to get you the same way. We want to get you activated in the kingdom of God so you can understand how glory says the kingdom of God's human resource strapped. Huh? It is. It's human resource limited. Father doesn't want you going any other way but with, a, with healing in your wings. Amen. Divine power and glory and authority. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you right now, if I was sick, I wouldn't tell nobody. Are you listening to me? Yes. Uh, I'm not bringing him no shame, disreproach. Are you listening to me? Come on, man. I'm going to get after this thing tonight. I'm going to break off this thing. You should be a person in here sick. Preacher's daughter, wonderful, wonderful family, wonderful ministry in Cuba. Afflicted for 20 years. Afflicted with a tormentous mental disease. 20 years. She comes up. I, I, I'm barely even. I preach. I barely even pray for anybody. She said she came up. She showed me her box full of pills, all organized, nicely organized, pill organizer. <laughs> she said, "I've been dependent upon this for 20 years. Tonight, God delivered me. I'm completely free. Amen. Everything Amen. about my everything about my mind was changed." <laughs> she said, "I." She said, "I felt it go out of me. Amen. I felt it go out of." me. Well, the reality of it is, is what I know. I watch this happen. Father's no respecter of persons. He's not saying, I'm going to heal you. I'm not going to heal you. I'm not going to heal you. I'm going to heal you. I'm not going to heal you. Not 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 you. But not you. Not you. Not you. But not you. And not you. Definitely not you. And, and <laughs> he's not doing that. God's no respecter of persons. 
How do I convince you not to own something that, doesn't, that God hasn't bought and purchased for you at Calvary? How can I convince you not to be something that God has not described you to be? How can I convince you to be what God said you are? How can I convince you to not allow anything else in your life except for what he says doesn't come out? doesn't matter how, kind, how it comes at you, what kind of torment it is, what kind of force it comes at you with. It doesn't belong to you. It ain't mine. You foul spirit of hell, get out of here. You leave me alone. Don't you ever come back. Amen. The Lord comes and he challenges at times. Many times the remedy is just a simple act of obedience. The remedy is just a simple act of surrender. The remedy is just a simple act of humbling yourself. God is a good teacher. All we got to do is be willing to walk with him. He's brought, invited us into a heavenly realm. And he, he's an amazing God. He says, listen, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with you, Mark. I want to take you and stand you before people and before nations so that they can get an idea of what I'm like. But that's what he said. And, and I was like, no. You know, I do the Gideon, you know. Who, me? But this is what he's done. He's invited us. Everyone, every single person. He's left no one out. It's, it's time for the valiant people to stand up. It's time for those who heard the call to begin to lay hold on and say, wait a minute, I've got a heavenly vision. I've got a heavenly passion. Papa's given me the opportunity. How can I make this some, like, second, third choice? Right now I'm busy worrying. I'm hoping to get a promotion tomorrow or next year. Whatever. The stuff that has crept in of our lives and spoiled us. Philosophies that have spoiled us. Ideology spoiled us. False doctrine spoiled us. Things that we've allowed to commune with our mind that if we had any sense of reality, if we would know the Word of God, we'd say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not the Holy Ghost speaking. That's not the Word of God. People so live their lives outside of the Word of God, they have no ability to recognize when they're thinking things that are not the Word of God, that are literally contrary to the Word of God. Then they're making decisions and agreeing with it, and it takes control of them. It takes possession of them. You don't need to get a ring, in a ring, a pentagram, and summon demon spirits. You have some troubles. All you need to do is agree with a lie. You're not going to be in good shape at all. It's time to agree with the truth. The truth will set you free. There's a liberation here. Papa's called us to come and live in this realm of the Spirit. He's empowered us with his righteousness. He's given us his own righteousness so that you and I can learn to choose the good and refuse the evil, to love righteousness and hate iniquity. And in there, he, 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 the whole part, the, the dynamics of that is that he's... He's, an, he's anointed us with the oil of joy, which is a synonym for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Did you know that? We know that how that God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power. So if Hebrews says he anointed with the oil of joy, then we know what Jesus was anointed with, the Holy Ghost and power. So that's a synonym for the, the Holy Ghost. And we know that that is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. It's the evidence of the Holy Ghost. It's the fruit of the Spirit, joy. I mean, come on, think about it, dear people. If we begin to recognize this, then we say, wait a minute, my behavior is wrong. Somehow I've been yielding myself to the wrong thing and justifying it because I believe that I'm more right than God. And I believe that with that day that I got saved, everything happened for me. And so whatever I feel, I'm just going with it because I'm a loosey-goosey Christian. <laughs> this runs with whatever whims coming through the, you know. To me now. No, I come under the discipline of submitting myself to the ways of God, the movings of the Holy Spirit that are described to me, established by the Word of God, which lives and abides forever, that is the creative power of God that begins to work in us in a way, mightily, when we agree with His Word, which is all based upon our individual will. And I'm will do whatever He says. I don't be that. He said, Be happy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you right now, Papa told me to stand on my head in the middle of July and spit snowballs. He didn't empower me. <laughs> he didn't empower me. He didn't empower me with the ability to do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just get on my head and start spitting. I'm telling you, before long, snowballs would be coming out. Praise God. Whatever. 
It's true. If we come under his rulership, yes. if we come under his governorship, and we, we stop saying, you can't do that. Well, my Uncle Joe, he was the holiest man I ever knew, and he had migraine headaches. He was cross-eyed and had dis disease in his liver. And now we're going to rewrite the Bible for your uncle, whoever. Come on, people. Are we going to rewrite the Bible because you're going through some whatever, crisis. You're going through some change of life. People, God's word is set far above all things, given to us the insight and the ability to walk with him in a heavenly realm. You need to learn how to dance more. You need to learn how to get excited. You need to learn how to get yourself a facelift. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said in a church the other night, I said in a church the other night, everybody in that place, they look bad. You know, I said, how many are filled with joy? And like everybody raises their hand. You got to be kidding me, man. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Notify your face. <laughs> it is so amazing to me how people can get wrong ideas. Everybody raises their hand. They're full of joy. You're kidding me. You really believe that? Lord. It was, a, it was like a trick question. Father's, Father's invited us in the heavenly realm, and he teaches us how to walk so perfectly in it with some of the, he's just amazing. He's amazing with some of the most beautiful training wills, as it were. Some of the most beautiful, he gives us some of the most beautiful things to do to be perfected in his divine power and authority, like joy, like love, like peace, like goodness, like kindness. Like learning how to walk in lowliness and meekness and humility, all belonging to a glorious supernatural realm where, where we command the wind and the waves, where we, where we command the moon to stand still and not move, and the sun has to obey too at the same time. It's just amazing stuff. This is like Elisha. This is a pretty cool one. I love this story. You know, it's like the prophets come to Elisha and said, look, this, we're cramped. We're overcrowded now. The more prophets have come, and we're just like, we've got to have more room. Can we go down such, such place and build ourselves a bigger, a bigger house, a bigger quarters for everybody because we're overrun? And the prophet says, yeah, go down there and, go down and build. And so they said, would you please come with us? He said, sure, we'll go down. I'll go down there with you. You know, he likes he's going to get down there. He's going to be the construction foreman, I guess. So he's hanging around. And when the prophets are going at it, he's got a borrowed axe. He's going at it, chopping down a tree. His axe head breaks. Falls, and, you know, poor prophet. I mean, what a terrible thing. He's like laboring for the kingdom. His, his axe head goes flying over into the water. He starts screaming. Oh, it's borrowed. It's borrowed. He's losing it completely. <laughs> his whole life is devastated by an axe head. I mean, can you imagine your value of your life is all wrapped up in an axe head. And, and Elisha goes over there and says, well, where, about where did it go into the water? <laughs> and there's the prophet is pointing, and he takes a little stick. <laughs> this is wild. I mean, can't you see them laughing? I'm telling you, this is really, I can see, the, I can see a lot of fun going on. See, watch what's going to happen now. <laughs> takes a little stick, says, watch this, throws it in the water, and suddenly the axe head floats. <laughs> This is crazy, beautiful, wonderful things. It's living the life of the Spirit. The life of the Spirit is the life of heaven. It's the life of fellowship with God. It's a place, it's a realm in which He exists. It's a place where all the things that this world has lost its value and lost its meaning is absolutely other than the world. It's opposite of the world. It's contrary to the world. It's contrary and it's opposite as light from darkness, as hate from lying, has gone from Satan. So the Spirit from the things of the world from all of its lusts, from all of its desires, from all of its defeat, from all of its confinement, from all of its imprisonment, from all of its limited thinking, from all of its can-do mentality, from all of its negative insights. It's a totally different realm. And the Word of God shows us how to live there, how to walk there. And the Holy Spirit is so excited about it when we're wanting to do the Word. When we're saying, oh, Lord, use me. I want to shake nations. I don't yeah. see enough people doing it. Lord, I'm stepping up. I know you need more human resources, and I'm volunteering. Yeah. And immediately you're empowered. See, you don't have to wait. And the Father said, well, let me think about you. I need to consider you for a while. 
His eyes go to and fro, looking for him, someone and so he may show himself mighty on their behalf, and he's not picky. He's just looking for anyone who's willing to cooperate, who's willing to agree with him. You've got to agree with him. You've got to do it exactly his way. It's got to be done just like he said to do it. And all, the whole process is learning where we have altered his word, learn, learning where we have tried to live out our own life, where we brought in our own value system and tried to superimpose it in, the, in our fellowship and relationship with the Lord. He's saying, no, you can't have that. He's teaching us in a humility and a brokenness that demands. That he's teaching, God is teaching us a humility and a brokenness that produces such divine boldness and confidence that we command him. It's true. It's true. Mark chapter 11, this is Jesus said, hey, I want you to talk to me. Like somebody banging on the door screaming, get up and get it for me now. Hey, that's what the Lord says. Go read it. Don't go read it now. Go read it later. I'm giving you an overview right now. This is how I learned to tell somebody, go back and ask again. 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 I learned that from Luke chapter 18. This is why men ought to pray and ought should always pray and not to faint. And then the Lord Jesus concludes that with saying, will the Son of Man find this kind of faith when he returns? And then, in the, and then says, ask and you shall find. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And you hear these great elaborate sermons on asking, seeking, and knocking. Asking, seeking, and knocking means in Matthew chapter 18, or forgive me, Luke chapter 18, exactly what it means in Luke chapter 11. You banging on the door demanding somebody to get up and get it for you now. That's what it means. It means to demand. Well, I just don't agree that that's what God would have us do. Well, then you go ahead and write. What, what chapter are you going to write? You write your chapter in the Bible, you place before God and see if it gets inserted. You write your commentary and see if where God agrees with you. He says, oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Raphael is right. He's right. Ain't nobody should be demanding me. Nobody should be boldly banging on the door telling me to get up and get it for him now. When I've said I'm in bed with my children and we're sleeping now, go away, come back and ask later. Oh, yeah, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I didn't mean to wake you up. There's, God has invited us to come into a realm of fellowship with him to take over his stuff. Amen. Yeah. To take over his stuff, to do it. To take over his stuff in a good way. Yes. To take over his stuff in a good way. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. To go and execute his will. To go and do it. Yes. Do it. Father, when we were born again, we were given the authority of sons. That's, what, that's why every time you hear about sons, whether it's Romans chapter 8 and verses 14 through 17, or you hear about sons in Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, he's telling us that we're heirs, his heirs and his co-inheritors. He's telling us that we're not like a child that, that differs nothing from a servant that are just held, uh, you know, until we get trained up enough. He said, you empowered at the very moment. As soon as a person is born again, they go cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. Yes. In fact, sometimes that's the most effective. I've heard many people say that God's people, Christians, are the most effective in the first six months of their born-again life because that's when they've got the most faith, the most trust, and the most believing of God. That should not be that way at all. That's because that's the product of religion. And I'm asking you, you product of religion and saying no to God too many times and postponing God so many times that you barely get any kind of a measure of any kind of excitement about him out. And that's under duress of the preacher screaming at you with blood vessels popping out of his neck. Are you listening to me? Yes. And of course I know that for the most part that ain't going on in here. You guys are a little bit sleepy tonight because you're so worn out laboring in the kingdom, and it's a little hot. Uh, you need a special air conditioning thing. You got to have everything right. You got to have the lights right. Temperature's got to be right. You know what I'm saying? Everything's got to be right. And then when you, you got to have the right amount of rest, right amount of food in your stomach, and then you can really move in God. Jesus. 
No, it's just the way it is. Just don't tell me no. Because you know, I'm trying to figure this thing out. Huh? And I'm not gonna go with the, I'm not gonna go with the other choices that you just completely dead to God. Don't know how to respond to the anointing after this many years. I'm gonna go with the fact that you're still in need in need of it. the lights right and smells, smells. Somebody says, Can we get those plug in smells? You know, those and you plug it into this you plug it into the power area and it <clears throat> the aroma. I mean, if you weren't here on Friday night, I'm telling you, you missed out. Because I, I, just, I just, I mean, I'm really ministered on, on, on Numbers chapter 20 and verse 20, 29. Man, when you're clothed with the anointing, no death can hit you, no sickness can hit you. I'm going to tell you right now, Aaron did never had the sniffles. He never even had the sniffles. No unclean thing could come against him because the anointing is protection. There is a realm called the realms of the spirit where no power of darkness can touch you or access you. Everything that belongs to corruption has no power over you. When it comes to be, tries to enforce itself upon you, you have authority to rise up against it and throw it off. People, if you don't know how to flow in the Holy Spirit, if you do not know how to give yourself to praise and worship if you don't know how to give yourself to that wonder wonderful flow of the Holy Ghost where you build up yourself in your most holy faith they're keeping yourself in the love of God so you can know the love of Christ a function of the fullness of God so you can have boldness in the day because you're dwelling in his love where your love is made perfect because you walk even as he is because as he is so are you now in this world all of that hallelujah because that's just who I am. That's the way I'm living. Praise God. Somebody said, who are you? I'm as he is. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. What do you do? And everyone who dwells in him walks even as he walks. Yeah. Everyone who says they exist in him behaves himself and conducts their life in their manner of living just like he lived. If Jesus had it, I got it. If he didn't have it, I don't have it. Amen. That's, read it. 1 John 2, 6. You don't have to read it now. Read it later. Memorize it. It ain't that hard. How, hard, how difficult is it to memorize everyone who dwells in him walks even as he walks? I mean, how hard is it? If you say you dwell in him, you're to walk even as he walks. How hard, how, is that hard to memorize? No, it's not hard to memorize at all when it's a living power of that which dictates to you who you are. It's not, it's not something I memorize, it's in my heart. It's, it's a reality to me, it's who I am. I mean, I don't have to try to fit into that. That's who I am. I mean, I can express who that is. That, that verse of scripture because it's who I am. It's who he made me. I'm in him and he's in me. And you think about it. I'm in him because he commanded me to be. I mean, think about it. I'm living my life in the realm of his spirit, in the realm of his power, realm of his authority, in the realm of his very existence. Right now, I'm there. You are there. This place is happening. The fireworks of heaven going off in this place. I'm just trying, trying to get, jerk some of you around who, who could continue to have the same kind of look, same kind of problem, same kind of issues for way too long. If it's going on for more than two months, it needs to come to an end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, whatever Father says and describes it in the Word that I'm supposed to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. Amen. You do it if you're boss. Your boss says, no, I want you to do this. I want you to use this kind of paper, and I want you to type this fast. Right. Well, I don't usually normally use that kind of paper. I don't usually type like that, but, well, you better get with it. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to find somebody else who uses this paper, and you, and you already know that. Right. See, so you, you know, then the boss says, no, I don't want you to dress like that. I, you know, I don't want you, I, that's, you know, you're overdressing in this place. I want you, we, we do shorts. We do shorts, <laughs> and we do short sleeve shirts with no collars here. You're going to get yourself some shorts. You're going to do it. You're going to conform. God comes along and you go, whoa, what's happening now? Ah, it's controlling. He's a controller. He's controlling. <laughs> Absolutely. He's demanding you to change yeah. and to be conformed, to be just like him. Yeah. He's demanding us to conform and be just like him. How dare he? I can't imagine a, a, a verse, a, a sentence that could describe controlling more than that. The way people want to define it. But God empowers us. Amen. He doesn't make us. But he says, you be, you, I, I purpose you to be just like my son. 
Because they're so positive, you see. I, I, I purpose you to walk in his joy. I purpose you to walk in his life. I purpose you to walk in his faith. I purpose you to walk in his power. I purpose you to walk in the same kind of relationship. But you're going to have to have a different kind of behavior because if you've got this other stuff going on, there's no way you can have what I want for you. I want to be your protector, but you've got to obey me. I want to be your provider, but you've got to do. You've got to come over here and be in this place that I've described for you to be because if you're over there, there's no way my provision can reach you there. It's all about what we can do and what we can be rather than where, you know, being completely off talking about what we can't do and what we can't be. You can't do it because you want it so bad. You can't be it because that's what you desire. That isn't, that's not my life. I can be it. And I can do it because it's what I desire and because of what I want. If I'm talking about saying I can't do it, I really like to, but I can't. No. Should this, the can't sh need to come to an end. The cans need to begin. The empowerment needs to be the focus and the center of your life. Quit making decisions like a pure human being. And let's get well. Let's get our, all of our little pennies and decide what we're going to do. Pennies, what can we do? It's like reading tea leaves. Pennies, oh, pennies are starting to tell me I can do a little bit more than I thought I could do. Oh. <laughs> There's some more pennies I didn't even know I had. Oh, I get to do, wow, whoa. I didn't realize I was going to get to do so much. It's true. Serving mammon. Watch out how you're thinking. You watch out how you're thinking. You, you find the realm of walking with the Lord where you detach. You're emotionally detached from everything that belongs to this world. And you're emotionally attached to everything that belongs to the realms of the spirit. And you just got away with him, and God tells you to go do something. You don't count pennies, just go do it. Because currency of heaven is not money, it's faith. Yeah. And you just go do it. It's going to cost a quarter of a million dollars to do the crusade, approximately. We haven't done the budget yet. In Colombia, and Cuba. No problem. Why? Because I'm not, lit. I didn't start counting the pennies. Counting heads. To buy the buy. I think we can do it. Oh, God, it's going to be close. <laughs> yeah, we raised all the way that you've been thinking, the way that you process. God's called you to live in a realm of empowerment, a realm of divine authority, a realm of the Spirit, a realm of heaven, where you could do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Without Him, you could do nothing. you got to get that. If you believe you can do something without Him, whatever you can do with Adam is not worth doing. Whatever you can do in a purely human realm, it's just going to burn up. It's going to fade away. It's meaningless. It has no value. Anything that has any value, you need him. Amen. Oh, yeah, you can drive home, but whoopee-doo. Oh, yeah, you can do all these other things. You can make money. You can have whatever you, you know, feel you need from other people around you and the world that is corruptible and temporal. But there's nothing of real value that you can do without Jesus. That's all I want. I want to just give myself to do. So what? What is? What is it? What is it that you'd like to do? Somebody says, "I want to be a great evangelist." Good, praise God. Is that burning on the side of me? Yeah. And then I look and say, "Well, what have you been doing?" Well, I've been doing X, Y, and Z, and none of it is evangelism. Something's wrong there. I got a burden for the lost. You do. And then all you hear about is what they're doing for the self. No, 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 no. Father wants to, doesn't want us to live a life of make believe. Hmm? You get baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire, and you're going to stumble out in the street. Your, your voice is going to be lifted up. You're going to go seek and save those which are lost. You're going to say, oh, well, I'm a housewife with three little kids. I'm excused. Sure, you just excused yourself. God didn't excuse you. You limited yourself. God didn't limit you. You just said you decided you opted out. God didn't opt. Did God didn't say you got three little kids. Right. People, God's called us to live in a realm called the Spirit, a realm called the heavenly, a realm called His divine power, a realm yes. called His glory, a realm called His purity, a realm called all those things which Jesus did, signs and wonders and miracles. It's a, the decision is ours. We, you've been born again. 
I'm looking across the room here tonight. Everybody in this place is that, that I can see. You've been born again. You've been born in the Spirit so that you could step over into the realms of the kingdom of God to start living out the life, the heavenly life, the living out the life of Jesus. So just do it. Quit waiting for a day to come. The day's already come. Just go ahead and do it. Just know that you're walking in divine health. Just know that no, you know, evil thing can come against you. Know that you don't have to worry about anything. Father is going to provide all that you have need of according to His riches and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every dimension of flowing in the gifts of the Spirit and the working of the power of God in your life. Really, Crystal, it happens the same way as it does did with you, with any musician, where you say, look, I want to be able to worship the Lord. I want to be able to flow in worship. I want to be able to sing and flow in worship. And you don't just sit around saying, wishing that someday you could do it, listening to other people's CDs. Watching somebody play the piano on the television with a longing eye. Wow. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that I can do that, oh God. Ah. You, you don't do that. That's mental. You go and you get yourself a keyboard. And you begin to give yourself to it. You begin to labor in it. You begin to cry out to God. He fills your heart with it. Then it begins to bust loose. It begins to start sounding like heaven after a while. Same in every, every other area of the gifts of the Spirit, the work and the power of God. It's been made available to you. He's put it in your heart. If there's nothing burning in your heart tonight, I don't want you to leave here unless something's on fire on the inside Amen. of you. Yes. Yes. If you're just walking around kind of numb, that's not a good state. The diagnosis is really bad. The spiritual diagnosis is really bad. But we've got you cure tonight. And it's at the center of it's going to be repentance. At the center, there's going to be repentance. Or center, there's going to be something that you were unwilling to do, that God told you to do. There's things or place that you walked away from God, that you backslid. When God had called you to do something, you didn't do it. You're going to have to repent of it. You're going to have to get it right. So that you can move on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm lay hands again on everybody in this place tonight. And, you know, I just want you to understand the reason that we do that, the reason we lay hands on people is because we just want you to begin to go way over into a realm, hook up into the realms of the Spirit. We don't want you to do your thing when we lay hands on you. We don't want you to say, oh, I'm going to go to my place. <laughs> we want you to let God take you to his place. He's calling you up. <laughs> Every time I feel the presence of the Lord, I just start crying. No, God wants you to take you to another realm. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wants to take you. He wants to, fine. He wants to take you to an experience in his presence that causes great excitement and joy and faith and power and authority. And then it gets bigger than that. And it gets bigger than that. And it gets bigger than that. Father's called you in a realm called the realm of the Spirit. You live there. You're there. God the Holy Ghost is inside of you. You the temple of God. God the Father lives, lives on the inside of you. Christ Jesus lives on the inside of you. The Lord Jesus wants to manifest himself to you. You just got to come over here and start agreeing with him, just simply responding to his word, simply obeying him, saying, I cannot come and manifest myself. If you're sitting over there in the darkness, you need to sit right here in the light so I can reveal myself to you because I'm not going to go over there in the darkness. I'm not going to have any agreement with me. And if you've got any mixture in you, you're not going to be able to hear my voice because it's going to it's going to block up your ears. It's going to shut your stand. Your, your spiritual senses down so you can't understand a single thing I'm saying. That which eyes not seen, that which ears not heard, that which has never been in the heart of man, God can only show to us by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to talk to us because we've been born again, because we've been given a new heart and a new spirit so we can receive those things that are freely given to us of God. And we can't take a new heart and a new spirit and go out and commune with devils and thank God the Holy Ghost. He's going to be able to speak to us and develop us. People, it is worth being segregated unto God. It is worth being consecrated unto God. 
It is worth standing the test of everything that comes against you in temptation and saying no to it because I'm telling you, there is a great reward here. Knowing that God is and that He's here and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And diligently seeking Him isn't trying to find Him because He's not lost and neither are you. Diligently seeking Him is simply consistently and faithfully obeying Him and pursuing those things which He's told us to pursue and doing what God told us to do. That's seeking Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord just simply says, draw near unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. I can, tell how, I can tell how much you've been drawing near to the Lord based upon how near he is to you. The nearness of God to you is the expression of his glory through you, which has as its chief expression his love and his joy and his peace. Yes. Has his chief expression, his meekness, his lowliness, his humility, which means that you obey God's word and you go do what he says and you don't have excuses. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Obeying God's a joy, it's a delight. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting on God. You waiting on God with me? Hallelujah. She told Roma, she Rushikia. Hallelujah. I'm just believing God in His mercy and His grace to show you how to make a transition to just get over it, to be a sums of delight. And I think that one of the things that highlighted the revival, that what we call the Jesus revival, that started in 68, 69, was going strong in the 70s, even. <clears throat> Those people just felt, just got so excited about Jesus. They just fell so in love with Him that they just wanted to be Him. The whole thing was, hey, I get to be Jesus. I get to have the Jesus ministry. That means we get to go do signs and wonders and miracles. Yippee, let's go do it. Yeah. And it just went everywhere. People just went everywhere. Hey, did you know that Christ Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, that he's here right now, that, he heal, that he'll heal you, that he'll save you, that he'll fill you with all the goodness of heaven? And, and with that excitement, there was a great release of the display of the power and the glory of God. And that's available right now. It's here right now. But you know what? God is not impressed with our individual personalities. No. At best, he's depressed. <laughs> oh, God loves the variety. He doesn't like that variety. His variety that he likes is described right there in the realms of his life and his glory. His variety like peace, love, and joy, and hallelujah. Yeah. And divine power and divine ability and lowliness. I mean, he doesn't like the variety of pride of life, arrogance, depression, sorrow, sadness, uh, you know, all the other <laughs> stuff that goes on in the madness of men's world. Come on, people. I want you to become, I want you to give yourself, I want you to imagine that you can actually give yourself to a realm to where your face starts shining. Yeah. And it begins with a smile. Yeah. Oh, I want my face to glow too. Well, you didn't have to have an encounter with God. No problem. Amen. And then you're going to have to be willing to do what he says to do. And he says, be happy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, can you imagine the impact that a church would have if everybody began to worship and what was happening upon their face was true delight? And listen, if you smile with your lips, you smile with your face, and your eyes are sad, you look like a clown. It's true. It's a clown. It's a freaky clown, too. So you can't smile without happy eyes. Hallelujah. We don't want no like freak show going on in the body of Christ. Are you listening to me? Come on, man. Hallelujah. Come on. We're just getting the troops right here tonight. Just getting the troops here right tonight. I believe people need to get organized to do it right. I believe, I believe that there's a place to walk in God just like David's mighty men where nobody gets, no one's taken out. Where the anointing becomes a shield about you. His glory becomes a shield about you. A divine provision, a divine protection. Where the power and the glory of God sustains you in the midst of famine, empowers you so that the flame cannot kindle upon you. Mm. To have the insights. The Syrian king is saying, who is it that's a spy 
Who is it that is a spy among us? And his, and his captain comes and says, no one among us. But there's nothing that you say in the privacy of your bedroom that the prophet Elisha does not know it. Go get that man and kill him. And at his aid, and backing him up, and that it's following his direction and his command and his authority, is the host of heaven, the ch chariots of the Lord, and the horsemen thereof. It's far bigger and far mightier than the greatest empire of the day that sends out the soldiers to come and get the man of God. Come on now. He says, he says to his spiritual blind servant, Oh, God, open up his eyes so he can see heaven. Oh, there's more with us than are with them. Then all the armies of the mighty men of the Syrians come down. The Syrian army comes down, and he goes, be blind. And they're all blind. My power. To subdue nations. Where are the mighty men of God? Be blind. Now all the mighty men are blind. He says, come, I'll lead you where you want to go. One prophet of God <laughs> leading the mighty men of the greatest kingdom around them. And they all, the thousands and the tens of thousands following the prophet of God, blind, holding one against another as they follow the prophet of God. He leads them right into the midst of Samaria, surrounded by the, the, is, the mighty men of Israel and says, now you can see. And they all can see. Come on, what power God has given to you and me. What divine authority should, be we, should we be willing to be consecrated to the Holy Ghost to teach us how to walk in this realm of creative power, of divine power that spans the ages of time, both eternal past and eternal future, that is displayed all the divine power of God in all of its fullness existed within and exists exist within Christ Jesus bodily, but existed within Christ Jesus bodily in earthly human fleshly form. That's power. That's great power. God hasn't told us, given us a possibility of stepping over to the realms of the heavenly and walking like Elisha walked in the realms of the heavenly in the realms of the spirit, but he's given to us the privilege of existing in his only begotten son, to be sons, to have the authority of sons. Come on, you're gonna have to be, you're just gonna have to become something more desirable to you than whatever fleshly lust Satan can throw at you. Whatever bone he can toss a dog. You go toss your bones to some dog that's eating them. I'm no dog, I'm the I'm a mighty man of God, filled with the Spirit of the Lord. I'm here to destroy everything. You better get out of my sight now, devil, otherwise you ain't gonna exist. We're going to not even send you to hell. We're going to slatter you into oblivion. If you could do that, of course you can't do that. But, you know, just getting radical with it all. Are you with me? Yeah. Just put some threats on it to go beyond the thing. Because <laughs> they're going to exist forever. But they're going to exist forever in hell. But you go after it. Come on, you be big in God. God didn't make you small in God. God didn't make you little. He made you great. Yes. But you got to learn how to be a servant yes. to function in it. He made you great. Yes. But you got to work, w learn to walk in lowliness and meekness. Yes. He made you great. Hallelujah. But you got to learn how to esteem everybody else better than yourself because <laughs> you're so overwhelmed with his love. Yes. Yes. As long as you're concerned about how everybody's loving you, you haven't even started. Right. You have not even started. You're walking in a fleshly mind and an earthly human understanding incarcerated in the prison of the human intellect. You've not even started. You've not even begun. In the realms of the Spirit, it's God's love that is poured into us, a love that's all about laying down our lives to love like He loves. There's no care about how you love me, it's how I'm loving you. Hallelujah. To where it's almost like I'm not even, where it's almost like you don't even... It's almost like you're not even concerned about how God is serving you and taking care of you. It's about how you're serving Him and taking yeah. care of Him. Amen. It's, different, it's a different mentality. Yeah. 
It's not about waiting for you to get permission. You've already been commissioned. Amen. <laughs> you know, my goodness. And you recognize that you're disobedient unless you're doing it. And yeah, we go with the same kind of almost unbelief. Just it, unbelief is in the word. Word is just like shock. Yeah. When the, Jesus told the disciples, "Go cast out devils and raise the dead," they went like, "What? Yeah. You going with us? No, you going by your house. You going on your house? What? Yeah. You going to see him? Yeah. Wanting to camp out twenty feet from the place that they started." We'll go into the town next day. I mean, all the excuses, because they, they're no different from you and me. But then they come back going, the devils are subject to us through your name. <laughs> you should have seen what I did when I got there in that town. It was amazing. <laughs> I walked into the place just like you did. Someone fell down, started foaming at the mouth. And I said, devil, go. And it left. It was amazing. I walked into the person blind, and I just barely even looked at him, and they saw. True. Jesus said, I got something even greater for you. Your names are written in the realms of divine power and glory, in the halls of greatness, huh? in the books of remembrance, huh? in the places of authority in the realms of heaven. Your names are written in the author realms of authority in heaven. Wow. That can't be small to you. Your job can't be bigger to you than that. That thing you were wanting to do for your vacation can't be bigger to you than that. That little thing that you wanted that you got disappointed over that you couldn't have, it can't be bigger to you than that. Your little dirt pile can't be bigger to you than that. Your little rocks and sticks can't be bigger to you than that. Amen. Amen. So interesting watching a bunch of people sing, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it in my hands, I got it in my feet, I got it in my walk, I got it in my talk. And then it just ends there. He would just wish it would just be great if they would just really walk out and go, I got it. I'm on assignment from heaven to execute the will of the Father, to do the works of Jesus and greater works being taught that God the Holy Ghost and it's on the job training. Amen. Stand with me. Yes. <laughs> Somebody said, well, what does the Lord want me to say? He wants you to speak his word. But how will I know what, what to say? He will speak to you expressly by his spirit through you by his spirit that's why you've got to learn to quit speaking all the nonsense there's some of you in here in you in here you speak nonsense you speak lies of yourself you speak lies about people around you it imprisons your face can you imagine seeing yourself and you're actually walking around with a cage over your head and a lock on your mouth. Did you imagine see a big old huge combination lock? A cage right over your head. Wouldn't you want to get that cage off? Yes. Go ahead and unlock that, get that lock off. Wouldn't you like that? Yes. Quit speaking your own words because you're cursing yourself. Yes. You're imprisoning yourself. Yes. Quit declaring your thoughts. Quit going with whatever suggestions enter into the realm of your thinking. Start giving yourself over to what God says. Start thinking the things that he says. Deny everything else. Resist it. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And it won't be long. And the God and the Holy Ghost will have privilege to then develop you to a place where you start moving in this divine inspiration. If you're inspired to do it, it's God. You're doing it because right out of God. And what's going to come out of your mouth and a proof that it's inspiration of God is his word, his faith, his knowledge. His wisdom. You've been invited into a realm called the spirit. 
It is the realms of heaven. It is the realm of the kingdom of God. It is a place of the divine empowerment of God that God empowered Christ Jesus with. We've got to be so excited about this. We've got to get such a spirit of wisdom and revelation about this that this, could be, this becomes bigger than any other things that we had going on. And we don't make it some kind of, a, a, you know, faraway thing that we're going to try to lay hold of and grab hold of. It's something that is already empowered. We're empowered and it's been given to us and we now just do it. We just do it. I want you to learn how to flow in the Holy Ghost. I want you to learn how to respond to the Holy Ghost. So, so that you speak after him. You speak by him. It comes right out of your passion. Don't come out of your head. You don't walk up to people and give them a spiel like you're selling them a used car. Are you trying to talk them in to some kind of philosophical ideology? But the spirit of life comes out of you and it strikes the very heart of men. It's that wonderful word of knowledge that comes out of you. You don't even know you're speaking word of knowledge. It's word of knowledge. The spirit of the word comes out of you. And it, it pierces the dividing asunder of heart. Joy and tomorrow. Spirit and soul and the discerner of thoughts and intents of heart. And the person is set free right there on the spot. It doesn't happen to everyone, but everyone's touched by the power of God that comes through your life. You feel the anointing. You feel the power of God. With every word, you feel the presence of the Lord. Jesus. 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 You're supposed to learn how to do this in church. If you can't learn how to do it here, you can't have it. If it isn't happening in your house. And that's why I know. That's why I look at people. And that's why sometimes I'm refreshed. But I go, well, that person's not being used in the kingdom. They're not doing nothing. Because they're not responding to the anointing. They're not being filled up with anointing. The only thing that they could do is some religious thing. Yeah. Some human thing. All they could do is express what they know about God from a purely human perspective. And they're going to do anything. And that's not what Father wants. And it's what it not, it's, that's not what people need. The only thing that's going to set the captives free is the flow of the power of God through our lives. Father has invited us into the realms of the Spirit. But we've got to learn how to yield to the Holy Ghost and depend upon Him and let His glory flow through us. His presence is here to be expressed through our lives. You're going to have to learn how to yield yourself. Many times it's things that you've got to repent of. Many times it's things that God says you can't act that way. You can't think that way. Your heart's not right. You're not hungry. You're not desperate for my presence. You're desperate for what you want. What you think you need. I wish, I wish you could just have whatever it is you want, whatever you th is you think you need, so you can discover that you didn't do nothing for you. You think, well, if I can get a bunch of money, then I'm, you know, I can then go on. I'll have the things that I know. They get there, and they're like, well, I'm not different. This is worse. Right. If I could just have more friends, and then find out, well, no, that is, no, I'm not different. If I could just get more respect, no, no, I got all the respect now, and I can still just as messed up as I was before I started. I still got more, and I got more problems than I had before. I'm not going to limit you. I'm not going to limit any person, myself, anyone, based upon what, what, ability we have in wisdom and understanding because father says ask of him and he'll give you liberally and you begin to function in his wisdom and so you're not limited to some kind of small perspective where you can only grasp small concepts and we got to just leave you there spirit of wisdom and revelation is here so you can see what all god's done for you and what he's called you to do hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on in. Come on in. Everybody come up here. Some of you were already on, I saw it. Jesus. 
Jesus. The power of God's here. The empowerment of the Holy Ghost to do and live out the very life of Jesus is here. You know, I, I grabbed a hold of Ellie's hands on Friday night. And really, when I prayed for her, I said to her, I said, listen, don't you put any cream on this hand, these hands, expecting something that's made of men to do anything for you. You know, really what I was doing when I said it, I was breaking the power and the influence of anything that would stand in the way of the healing. And then you know, her hands are totally healed. Pretty simple. But I've done that. I've, I've said by the same spirit that to people before. And they get all, what are you talking about? I'm not willing to do that. I don't agree with you. Okay, then you're going to have your sickness. You're going to have your disease. You have your problem. Father's always trying to bring us into a place where he can provide for us. Things have got to be broken. Strongholds come upon our lives. Things get imposed upon our life that we agree with. Unknowingly, unwittedly. Praise God for the spirit of wisdom. Praise God that he speaks. He shows us. Because our heart's going, Father, I want to get this right. And that's all it takes. I want to do this right. I want to learn. I want to be used by, Father, I'm not going to limit you. I'm not going to tell you what I will not do and what I will do. I'm going to tell you, I'm so desperate to do anything you can do through me. I'm so excited about doing it. Yes, Lord. You know, here are all these guys, these, these guys, you know, around me. They're in Cuba, and like I said, you know, we had an, we had the first. It was historic. It was, I'm, I don't want, this isn't self-serving. I'm just telling you. It was historic. It was the biggest gathering of pastors since 1959 in the revolution. 100, over 100 pastors, 15 different denominations. There was never that big of a gathering of pastors since 1959 and before. It's totally historic. Now listen, listen. Oh, I'm just so excited talking about doing this great crusade. And then this one guy said to me, he said, would you come to this church? It's a small church. Would you, would you come? I said, we were making excuses about the small church. Well, when I got to the small church, it was, well, it was very small. I started preaching, and there was only enough people on the inside. By the time I'm finished preaching, they were all on the outside, on the around this church. So it was pretty big. It just small, the inside of the church wasn't that big. And I said, and, and, the glory and the presence of the Lord was there. People just touched by the Lord, been touched with the Lord inside and outside the church. And I stood outside the, oh, we were getting ready to leave, and I stood outside the building just looking at the glory of God, looking at people just sitting under the anointing, the people laying under the anointing. And I said to the men that were with me, the preachers that were with me, one of them, you know, being very apologetic about it being a small church, going, I said, no, no. I'll do this for the rest of my life. I'll just spend the rest of my life just doing this, going from church to church. Fine, I'm fine with it. I'm not going to dictate to God how He use me. I am so blessed to be used in whatever. Listen, 35 years ago, 34 years ago, being on the streets of Point Loma, Harbor, various different places, Mission Beach, Bishop, uh, Mission Beach, Pacific Beach, Ocean Beach, just out on the street corner, talking to people about their soul. Same anointing. So honored. To show up at the beach someplace, just go find someone, begin to talk to them about the Lord, and, and, and the power of God just come down, and just everything changed. Just so honored. It's where it all began. Yeah. It's where it's all developed. I was standing in front of one of the kings, two of the kings the other day, and, the, and one of the, one of the, Kings looked at me and he says, where did you get that anointing? In his, in his broken English. So where did you get that anointing? Where did you get that power? Because a king can see power when other people can't see it. Standing right where you're at right now. Just, I couldn't, I just, I didn't say nothing. I just went. I didn't say a word. I just pointed out towards heaven. I didn't say much because I was just under the glory of heaven anyways. I don't want, you know, there's times you don't even know how to speak. The more you talk, the word digger, big deeper the hole you dig. God's not speaking, shut up. 
It's true. God's not speaking. All you're doing is being, you know, come on. Don't do that. Learn how to just understand. Your wisdom, your insight, your responsibility isn't to live for yourself, but to live for heaven. You go to talk and all your stuff. Huh? There's, that's a problem. Let God speak. But if I would have stopped and told him, you know, because I thought about it after I just thought about it. I know where. I know where. Chicano Park. Sixth Avenue. Pacific Beach. Standing there. Standing there in his presence, speaking to a small group of people. Making an altar call to five people as though I'm talking to 500,000. Same glory, same anointing. I just want you to understand, God's called us in the realms of, He's called us in to live in the realms of greatness and the realms of spirit. And we begin right where we're at. We just start moving with where we're at right now. He's given us all the power and the ability that we need. And if we're faithful to what God has given us right now, it will just continue to increase. God will open more and more doors. Amen. But I didn't serve Him then for doors to be open in the future. Right. I was serving Him then because I was just right. in the kingdom, just right. loving it. Yeah. Loving it. I, just, I didn't go out highways, byways, shopping for people to be in my church. I didn't have one at the time. I was ministering in Calvary Chapel in a college fellowship. Father wants to touch you tonight with the reality of heaven. Start understanding who you are and quit living an earthly life and a human existence. Start living the life of Jesus. God's called you to live his life. I want you to go to the nations of the earth and people look at you, kings look at you. Presidents look at you and go, where'd you get that anointing? Where'd you get that power? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And just in this place of fellowship with him. Simple obedience. Just standing here in the abiding place, worshiping. Because if I, you know, that's really where it is. It's just standing here worshiping. It's, and I would probably say it isn't all the other things. It was just standing there worshiping, just being here and just always happy to be here and showing up for prayer, just being so excited. And when there was five or ten people in the church, just, it didn't even matter because it wasn't even about that. It's just like we're here. It's not a show. It's a fellowship. Fellowship. God has called you to greatness. I don't care who you are. You put your name. Maybe every day you've lived, Satan has beat you up and said you could be nothing and that you were nobody. It's about time you quit listening to the lies because all of that is nothing but lies. He's called you to greatness. He's called you to walk in his authority, in his might, his power, and his strength. And all you got to do is believe it and agree with him and say, Lord, I'm ready to do it. I don't care what it looks like. I'm, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'm just desperate to do it. Just start living Jesus' life. Just live Jesus' life. You a Holy Ghost person walking around with the latest announcements from heaven. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven and receive right now. Strengthened by the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Strengthened by the power of God right now. Strengthened by revelation, by insight. Understanding the knowledge of the Lord to walk in it for this day forward.